just me. Or do those stacks seem a little skinny? Well, look at what we have here. <laughs> So before you start typing a comment, let me explain my logic here. So these are six inch pipes, which actually look pretty good and are probably size correct for this era of truck. Typically they came from the factory with five inch. These are six, they're a little taller. They're awfully tall though. So they do look a little skinny uh, because of the height. And actually where I got these, if you've been following this series for a while, you'll know that I bought these off the previous owner of this truck. He picked them up at auction and sold them to me. And he told me that they were just surface rust, which is why he had these bands. But let me show you, it's not just surface rust. If I can get this off. So you typically get the rust like this, which is just surface rust. But if you peek around, that's not supposed to be there. So yeah, these are, these are actually rotted right out. And I knew that when I put them on, but I thought they'd look and sound cool. So that's why we had them on for the last year. So what I'm planning to do actually is because it's so rotten here and because they're a little tall for the diameter, I'm actually planning to recycle or reuse these. So what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll cut it off at a decent, whatever makes sense for the height wise. We'll cut that off and then they're gonna go on snowman and I can put those factory uh, heat shields with all the holes over top and actually the uh, the movie truck had bent, they were just tips caps that were put on there, but I think this will still look movie correct and they'll sound real good with that 350 big cam. So the pipes are gonna get reused. We'll make sure that the, they go on snowman. And like I say, when I cut them off there, we'll get rid of all that bad rust. And the, uh, the elbows are junk, but that's okay because these are peat elbows and the Kenworth kind of make a funny bend and go up. So we'll just get six inch elbows and we got exhaust for snowman now. Now I was going to hold off. I've always dreamed about putting eight inch slash cut, uh, really tall pipes on this truck ever since day one. This is not a, this is not a uh, concourse resto by any means. This truck is my toy. It's a hot rod and I kind of had a vision for it. An eight inch really tall slash cut, 45 degree miter cut uh, pipes was what I've always wanted on here. Now I was gonna wait until I had the shop built and I had paint on this truck before I proceeded with buying these pipes. But what ended up happening was there was a fellow that's a Lincoln rep out of the States, uh, Keith. He reached out to me and he said, we'd like to help you out and, uh, and give you a smoking deal on some pipes for, uh, for LBL. And he's actually got a local rep out of Lloyd Minster, RFP Custom Shop. And the owner, Raymond, uh, talked to me and we settled on a, uh, a f definitely a friend price on these pipes, so I just couldn't afford not to buy them. <laughs> so we're gonna end up putting them on the truck. Now it is earlier than I'd like to, I would like to paint, but at the end of the day, all this stuff that I'm bolting on here will just fall off the truck. With an impact and a couple hours of work, all this stuff will unbolt because it's not rusted and we can take it right down to, uh, to bare truck, bare metal, and we're gonna strip the paint and ideally we're gonna paint it. Everyone's asking, when are you gonna paint it? When are you gonna paint it? Well, I don't want to do an outdoor paint job because outdoor paint jobs just never turn out. Now, I may actually attempt to try and paint this truck myself once it's in the new shop, which is still coming here this summer. So we'll put the new pipes on for now. We'll see how they look and we'll, uh, we'll see how they sound. Now this is a bummer. So these gigantic pipes, which I've actually got the picket elbows that'll bend right down to the ground. They've got new beautiful mounting plates that get the pipe far enough out. So I take these bolts off, but of course they have been on here since 1979 and there is a little rust in this corner. 
this actually, this the whole side of the calves gave me a lot of work because water was getting in there and it just pooled and you can see it just bulged out and rusted. So when I try and take these bolts off, I tried to take the first one off by hand and it broke and now I'm just using this. And yeah, there you go. Because these are actually nut inserts, nut inserts on the back side. So now this is, <laughs> this just grew into a bigger project. So I'll have to take this off of here. Maybe we'll clean up the metal a little bit and then we'll drill through. Oh man, it's gonna be a bit of work. And then we can put a, a nut on the back, maybe a nylon lock nut. Oh, what you think is gonna be an easy job turns out to be a big one. Huh, well we got lucky with one. The last one actually came out. Oof, yeah, it's a little bit of rust. We'll just cover it up with some chrome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's see how the other ones come off of there. That's gonna need a little body work. All right, so next we're gonna replace the Y pipe because there's actually a split there. So it would actually release the water that would collect in the pipes when it would rain. So it was actually a good system, but we don't need any exhaust leaks. So we'll put the new Y pipe on there, but it actually doesn't come up this high on these stock brackets. So we can remove these as well, because again, the pipe's gonna come down about here. The Y pipe will go both directions. And then we've got the, the picket elbows that are closer to the ground. So again, we don't need that bracket and we can get rid of all this rusty stuff. So we'll take all this out of here and keep moving forward. And if you're wondering where the serial numbers are stamped on 359 Peterbilts, it's right above the exhaust bracket on the passenger side. Okay, so now that I cleaned that up a bit, we'll just put some flat black and, and uh, dress that up and put the bolts back in. How's that saying go? Rust never sleeps? Yeah, no kidding. Oh, I knew once I started getting into the, uh, peeling back the onion of the, of the old cab here, we were gonna have some surprises. So, Peterbilt in their wisdom, just like with their roof caps, they elected to put uh, steel over an aluminum uh, frame. So, that is why this is just rotting out. Now, if you recall from the first episode when I started this whole project, this window was about a third open, so water was pouring in. And of course the roof was leaking like a sieve as well from giant holes. So water was just going down this wall and there's a platform here. So water was obviously sitting there and that's what that rotted that out. And then it went all the way to the bottom and rotted this out as well. So, oh boy, I'm gonna have to get that, that MIG welder wired up and we're gonna have some serious body work when we finally bite the bullet and start fixing this right huh yeah because i'll have to cut this out and put some fab some new panels and weld them in oh boy well it needed to get done eventually so i'll just stop moaning about it we'll patch it for now just so we can put the pipes on and enjoy the truck a little bit again until the uh until the shop's built I'm not gonna take this thing down because once you start this, it needs to stay inside. And once I take everything off, you can't drive it anymore. So fun's coming though, future episode. All right, let's see if we can fix this. Something like that. And something like that. There, done. So I finally got this side off and I stand corrected. Actually, the cab skins are aluminum, which makes sense. That's what I always thought. I always thought it was just the roof cap that was steel. But the fact that it was so rusted on the other side, 
leads me to believe that I wonder if somewhere along the way on these, you know, three layers of paint, they replaced this skin with a steel skin on the, uh, on the passenger side, because I mean, it's got rust all the way along and then that's a clearly a rust hole. But anyway, I guess ideally it would be best to, to pull the sleeper off and cut all the huck bolts out and then get a new skin for the passenger side. Yeah, maybe I'll look into that. I wonder if Dirks has those. Place that you like All the midnight rodeo Is it fixed? Nope. Is it patched? Yep. So I just threw some fiberglass in there and as you can see I was just grinding it down. I'll smooth it out as best I can and then we'll uh, we'll throw some primer on it and it'll be good enough for now. So at least I can throw my new pipes on and Still enjoy driving the truck around this summer before we really get started and fixing the uh, fixing the bodywork properly. But it's a taste of things to come for sure. Well, out with the old, in with the new. So I actually did a little bit more work there and cleaned it up. I mean, again, it's not finished perfect, but I did a little bit of bodywork, good practice for me. And then I just put primer on there because it kind of matches the roof cap and doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we'll finish bolting in both the upper and lower brackets, and then we'll uh, we'll start figuring out how to get those pipes on this truck. Give you a sense of the size of pipe we're putting on here. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. All right, so now I'm gonna try and mount these, at least the lower bands, and then what we can do is put on the lower picket elbow and on each side and then tie it in to the single exhaust pipe out of the turbo. And then we can just set those in place. Well, actually, I think I need to set the picket elbows, tighten these so they're held and then on both sides and then I'll know what length to cut that pipe off to and then how to kind of make that all work. So there's a pack of bushings here. So I'm guessing these guys just go in like so. And do they pinch this? How's this work? Okay, so let's take a look at one of these, one of these elbows. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Okay, I think what we're going to do is leave this material on there. We can always cut it off later, but it'll protect it. I'm getting dinged up. That's an exhaust pipe. Wow. Now, I think I could probably play with the height a little bit, but you don't want it too close to the ground. So I'll probably set it up on something and then put the bolts in and, and band it up like that. But that is gonna be sweet. So I think a small Home Depot pail is going to be about just about the perfect height off the ground. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty much, well, it's a little lower than the bottom of the tank, but hmm, I think I should go up a touch more. Well, maybe we'll leave it for now. You can always adjust it later. Oh yeah, we gave a little bit of anti-seize, which makes sense on these guys because they're going to take a lot of heat. Work. Like that. Here. Washer and lock washer. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I'm just not that bright. So I was tightening these uh, these clamps down and I was going, well, what, what's going on here? These are tightened all the way and it's still not tight against the picket elbow. And I measured this across and this is like seven and three quarters. And obviously the band is eight for eight inch pipes. So I reached out to Raymond who sold me the pipes. and I said, what, what am I missing here? <laughs> How come this won't clamp down? Is there supposed to be a, a spacer in there or what? And he said, well, rookie, the top pipe actually slides over this. This is a little smaller and tapered so that the, the top pipe's gonna slide over this 
and then this band will help seal the joint and hide the joint as well. So anyway, first timer here installing pipes <laughs> and there's no instructions. So can't fault me too much, but now we know what to do and we'll, uh, we'll get these installed correctly. Okay, so next, next comes the fun part that I've, I've been dreading trying to get this gigantic pipe on the truck without dropping it. So I think what we're gonna do is we'll measure, it's about 55, 55 and a half inches to the center there. So we'll assume that's where it's gonna drop to. So we'll measure 55 from the bottom of the top stack and we'll put on, we'll put on one of these bands and since it's an eight inch pipe, it should fit on there tight. So we can tighten it down and then that'll be a solid point. So when I lift the pipe up there and set it on this, the bracket will already be there and we can just drop a screwdriver in to hold it and then we can bolt it into place. And then that should hold, hold the weight. Man, I don't want to drop these pipes. Okay, let's take a look at what they look like. I hope I can, uh, of course that's the tapered end. I guess I'll measure from the bottom there. But I hope I can get it out of the garage. I don't think they're gonna be much taller than the other one. It's a 14 foot door. And I think these things are gonna measure out at 13 six from the ground. Okay, let's get this band on here. Oh. <laughs> oh. Always clear a walkway when you're lifting something heavy and important. <laughs> okay. oh, now this is one of those times when I could probably use a another set of hands but we built the truck this far by ourselves so why stop now okay. uh, i just gotta bite the bullet Get out. Watching along at home or enjoying this. Okay. Damn, it does seem tight. Okay, so the picket's gonna go lower. And I screwed up on my measurement. That sucks. Can one of the fans bring me that 1116 socket? Yeah, so I was finally able to, after many and up and downs up the ladder, trying to get the stack faced back and then the picket turned in and then I just had to keep raising and lowering it until it finally had the right line and then the pipe just fit on beautifully and now the joint is right behind the band. So that is beautiful. And I was talking with Raymond, he said these are steel with a chrome, uh, Lincoln Chrome does steel with uh, chrome plating, but you can actually get stainless pipe and he was thinking it might make sense to do a stainless elbow 
and then have that chrome plated because that's of course where water might sit and you get the road grime and that way the elbows would never rot out because if you did stainless the whole way cost would probably be double but that is looking good and uh the only thing is now pipes sticks out so far i hope i can still see in my mirror but that's a good problem to have we can always fix that uh, and everyone's always asking why are you breathing so hard in your videos well two reasons first is the, the camera is right beside my mouth so i'm talking right into the stupid thing and the second is this stuff is heavy to be lifted by yourself all right one more one down one to go So as you can see, there's a little shelf there. So you can see where the pipe is actually slightly smaller to fit inside the top stack. So again, I get smarter as I go here. So what I did this time was I raised the, the picket elbow up. So this edge that this will sit down on is outside of the bracket because I was kind of fighting the bracket on the other one. And then now I can see that it's, it's uh, down all the way. So with that, I've got the the opening facing backwards, so hopefully I don't twist this, and we'll just try and get it to fit down there. Oh, look at that. Now that is a beautiful fit. Very nice, Lincoln. Very nice. All right, so after a lot of, a lot of adjusting and tweaking, I think I finally got them level, matching, same height from the top to the ground. I got the bands tightened, I got the, the bolts tightened. We still gotta do the pipes underneath, that's gonna be the final piece, but I figure let's take a look at what they look like without their socks on. And Raymond also mentioned that you wanna make sure that you clean off all the oils and whatever else you get on there with a good microfiber cloth. Cause I think you don't wanna, you don't wanna bake anything onto this beautiful finish. Wow, is that ever looking good? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're just about ready. Final piece. Ah, that looks good. Final piece. Let's get the, the Y pipe. And the pipe's on underneath, and we're ready to fire this thing up and, and go for a drive. Okay, so now, final stages of this project. we got to connect that to this. So there's the original pipe that came out of the turbo. I had to shorten it a little bit. And here's the new Y pipe. And now, all we need is a few pieces of uh, flex pipe. And put it over each end. And then we'll secure it with a, with a good clamp. And tighten this all up and we should be uh, we should be good to go home stretch all right so I had a short pipe and a long pipe I think the long one's gonna work uh, over here and I can push the Y pipe into it and then the short one uh, it's a little too long I'm gonna have to cut it a bit yeah we'll trim a few inches off that one but that's it then we just put clamps on everything and we're ready to go for a ride. There we go. All done these off of here and who wants to hear what it sounds like
and even when it's not under load, you can just hear the whistling through those eight inch pipes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Is it practical? No. Nope. Is it awesome? 